Greeting, Traveler. All right, good evening, THL, and welcome to an extra special playoff preview episode of Tavern Talk. Uh, we expect to be going a little bit long tonight just because we've got a lot of exciting action to cover for the final week of the Legacy regular season. And uh, I am Ron Mexico. I have with me our regulars and, oh, damn it, who invited Tuna? Come on. <laughs> I think he invited All right. himself. What up, what up, Ron? <laughs> See, I'm gonna be on All right, talk. but um, you know, uh, Desharmo, uh, as always, running our op and doing all the extra special things behind the scenes. How you doing tonight, man? Doing good. I got some uh, an extra thing every week. I try to improve something, and this week, if you're gonna see on the left hand side here, you'll see I'm gonna put where we're at in the show. So right now we're in the introductions, and when we go to the other ones, you'll see it in the bottom right hand corner. So that's a little bit extra stuff I'm doing this time. Improving every week. I love it. 
and uh, as man, always, we have we have our other co-host, Jr. Juggerlaw. How you doing tonight? I have mixed feelings because I have to deal with your handsomeness for another week in a row. <laughs> Going it's in with the difficult. flattery, it's a tried and true strategy. I appreciate flattery it. or a backhanded compliment. Either way. We exactly. take those. That one. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, much to my personal chagrin, we have Brushy Tuna, the man himself. Uh, how you doing, Brushy? I just want everyone to know at home that Ron's been playing a joke for almost four hours about the odd damn it, Tuna, to start off the show. Don't let I've him have his victory. I've been over and over and over <laughs> just to Am get it exactly right. The, the right amount of hatred yes. it was it was hard to to try to balance it out but i think i struck the the right balance i hope anyway. uh i think you missed i think you missed <laughs> the entire dartboard so i feel like this well, is going to become like the most ongoing debate of tonight so uh oh, I, I think uh i think that's just tuna's go-to response no matter what i say so uh just just keep in mind Fair. you know anything he says cannot be trusted um, and with that, wow. we can we can jump into <laughs> our hat stats, right? Well, yes, our lineup stats as we the hat stats. Hat stats. Yes. If my countdown will work here, and there's my son. So did I hear that? New... We have a new up and coming yes. lineup here with Demon Hunter Druid Rogue Warrior being brought seven times and taking a 71% win rate, going five and two last week. Uh, some of the top lineups really struggling here, all sub 50%. What do you guys think of this? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think Rogue is is really, uh, I mean, it's it's showing that it's it's still a viable class. Um, I maybe the hunter. I think, I think a lot. The first lineup was was this week. People were a little unsure of the demon hunter, and if you go down to where people took out hunter and put in demon hunter, you can see that the lineup did a lot better. So demon hunter still good, rogue still good, hunter maybe not as good as people think. Yeah, very very possible here. Um, yeah. You know, we, we also see just an absolutely abysmal win rate from Druid Hunter Priest Warrior, uh, 33%. Another small sample size, but um, going to be interesting to see if this meta kind of keeps shifting or if we're starting to settle in. I know this one was impacted a little bit by the Demon Hunter nerfs, so we anticipate this week probably a bit more Demon Hunter coming right back since it proved, eh, yeah, it's still really strong. I will say the thing that really surprised me was the fact that I kind of... Ex so last week, a lot of people decided to hold off on bringing Demon Hunter because of the nerfs, because they didn't necessarily feel comfortable with uh, how it stood within the meta. I only brought it for Pro, because for Legacy and Hero, I felt it might be a liability. Then after testing it more during the week, I personally found that that's just not the case. It's The, it's, the nerf is definitely relevant, but you started to notice how... Um, it's still a very powerful deck, and it's still very uh, feels pretty safe, you know, to, to bring as of now. Um, I think at this point, what's the big, what's even bigger of a surprise to me though is that I've noticed a bunch, a fair number of people still not bringing it. So the opinion on the actual strength of Demon Hunter seems to be a bit dis, uh, divisive at the moment. Yeah, so it should shake out a little bit more um, as we see next week and into the playoffs. Uh, what do you think about the meta here, Tuna? Uh, you oh, know, I'm just I kidding. I don't like... care what you think. Oh! <laughs> no, one no, no, saw no. Go ahead. Coming. No one at go all. Ahead. <laughs> go <laughs> ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, I was going to say that, you know, the Demon Hunter rework, I think, has actually made the class kind of, like, weirdly stronger. So we'll probably see Demon Hunter as, like, the most broad class, like, whatever, as, like, in the most broad lineup this week. Because the fact that you can now lethal someone for more because your twin slice is now two uh two mana deal four is insane um i also think that rogue with the questing adventures being good into things like demon hunter and uh maybe a little bit into warrior so we'll also like show up again just like it did this past week we'll probably see like a demon hunter rogue warrior uh druid as the top brought lineup for the week in my personal yeah, opinion and as Inzi was saying in chat, uh, he was talking about uh, how he called Jam Demon Hunter Druid Rogue Warrior uh, a little bit earlier. So kudos to you, and uh, I think that's a reasonable call. 
Awesome. You guys want to move on to the next uh, next thing? Let's do it. All right. Uh, this next Let's thing is it. Jr. This is uh, on you. Jr. Made up. Uh, gave us a little. I did. Playoff look. So we have what we have here is we have the standings currently as they are, and then um, actually did not update the one that you sent me. This is the old one. Oh so, dear so... God! <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> so. So uh, some of these teams that are not out of contention are still in contention. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I didn't update I, it, actually. I feel attacked right now, for the record. <laughs> hey, hey, I was doing a you bunch should. of stuff. I was having to reset all the cameras because Tuna came late. So, oh, dear God. So okay. I completely forgot to, to add this in. To Blame change Tuna. It. I support it. I so, support it 100%. Of course so, you do, okay. Ron. <laughs> all right. So I got, my, I got my little diatribe ready. So the playoff picture, for those of you who don't know – is uh, when it when we we because of how much of a chaotic mess uh, each season is as far as the scores, it's really hard to determine like the actual like playoff positions people are in until the very last week, uh, because it's hard to gauge exactly how many points teams are going to get and like what the likelihood of that happening is. So with one week, even with just this one week, it was still pretty difficult to actually compile this together because. Um, like, especially when you look at red, for instance, it's very close. Now, the three categories I did, and I, this should have been four, there's there's technically four now. We have a long shot category. We I'll, have the I'll already just, qualified the teams, there. the teams that are on the cusp, the teams that are long shots, and then the teams that are already out of contention. Um, you'll notice there are a lot of teams already out of contention, but that's technically going to be less, so we'll get to them. For the already, we'll start with uh, the already qualified teams. For red, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. Good luck, Albatrosses. They have a huge lead. Nobody can catch up to them. It's literally impossible. Even if they got, they could all get swept this week, and they would still be in first. That's how much of a lead they had. Over, they have over everybody. Uh, for gold, it's actually just Merkel Merkel because, as Ron Mexico uh, intelligently brought to my attention, uh, there are a few situations where Hot Zilfs could get a very minimal amount of points. And they wouldn't actually make it, even though it would require uh, the three, all three teams, uh, the three teams behind them that are still in content, that are still really in contention, to uh, pass them. So yeah, basically we've got six playoff spots that are up for grabs right now, and I love how intense the fight is going to be. So for red, we'll start with the on the cusp teams. We have Redacted, Hearthstone Academy, Dirty Mike and the Boys, Beast Mode. And Illidan's Death Knights. Pod people, we're going to put them in long shots, and I'll explain why after. Um, now, the difference of points between Redacted and Illidan's Death Knights is six points. So that just kind of goes to show exactly how close it is just in general with all these teams. This week is going to be very uh, big as far as, like, you know, we'll have to see a lot more matches play out before we really get a picture of who's going to make it. Um, but all of these teams are in a pretty similar spot there you go, where if they, if they win... What was that? I uh, I updated it with the with oh, your, okay. your new sheet. So perfect. So, you so don't get flamed. I was gonna say thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> so for so for uh, for the on the cusp teams in red, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, all of these teams are in a position where if they win, they either are guaranteed to make it into playoffs or they are likely to make it. Uh, in the case of Redacted and Dirty Mike and the Boys, I feel pretty confident saying if they win, they are in. If in the case uh, for for both uh, HSA, uh, sorry for yes for sorry for uh, for HSA and Redacted, if they make it, they're probably going to they're probably winning in. For Dirty Mike and the Boys, Beast Mode, and Illidan Death Knights, it is likely. Um, basically, for like I said, I know I'm kind of biased because this is my team, but there's honestly <laughs> a good chance that if we win, we could still pass two of the teams that are ahead of us. Especially knowing that uh, either HSA or Dirty or HSA or Dirty Mike and the Boys, one of them is going to lose this week. One of them is, and then for Beast Mode, they're only one Watch point them ahead. Tie. Of us. That'd be funny. So, oh, <laughs> since you called it, <laughs> that would be hilarious if they tied. I don't even know what I'd be doing. I'm just, uh, it's a lot. Now, if we go into Gold, it's uh, the teams that are on the cusp are Hot Zilfs, Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters, The Stubs, and Blood Bloomers. Uh, Blood Bloomers. They're definitely in a win and in uh, a win. Uh, they need to win in order to make it. Uh, the other teams could, in theory, lose and still make it for this week. So more matches are going to need to be played for us to really see it. But uh, it's still pretty close. If I remember correctly, it's Zilfs have 133 points. Uh, the Stubs had 120. 
uh, Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters 124, and Blood Bloomers 117. So Blood Bloomers definitely have a bit of an uphill climb, but it is doable. It's definitely doable. Moving on to the long shots, we have uh, for Red, it is Pod People, Dad Legend, and F2L Red. Now, it needs to be stated that for Dad Legend and F2L Red, they basically need to win out in order to make it. I'm pretty confident if they don't uh, win out from the positions that they're in, they can't make it at all. Because if Ron if Ron said it correctly, I think they both currently cap out at about 124 points. Is that correct, Ron? Yeah, that's right. Actually, um, they kind of have the same scenario. They need Redacted to lose, they need HSA to lose, they need Beast Mode to lose, they need IDK to lose, and also uh, like not get a 23-point a week from F2L, as far as Dad Legend is concerned, and they need to get like a 20-point week, and F2L is Redacted lose, HSA lose, Beast Mode lose, they beat IDK, and Dad Legend gets like 19 or less. So it's like outlandish scenarios, but it could happen. Exactly. So it's possible. Pod people, on the other hand, despite only having four points above Dad Legend, actually have a fairly uh, better ch- better chance because if they do manage to beat Redacted, uh, then they would only that even if they don't pass Redacted by beating them, they could still easily pass uh, two of the teams that are also ahead of them. So, uh, or sorry, they would need to pass. Let's see, sorry, they would need to pass three of the teams ahead of them, which is also doable, uh, just because two of those teams are. IDK and Beast Mode, which are only four and five points ahead of them. And they could, in theory, they, if they got a big win, they could, in theory, pass uh, either HSA or Dirty Mike and the Boys, whichever team loses. So it's it's unlikely, but it is possible. Moving on to goal for the long shots, it's simply uh, Defies Brotherhood and ATL. Both of these teams basically need to have, uh, would need to win at least four out of their five matches to even have a shot at making it. And I don't think there's a scenario where even if they get a sweep, they're guaranteed to make it. And also, Matt at Arms pointed out to me in the chat, a Noyo team not currently mathematically eliminated either, needing a ton of help. And if the Stubbs get one point or less in the remaining matches and a Noyo team manages to get a 23-point week, they could actually make it. But uh, Okay, so we'll... Very, so very we'll unlikely. Move, we'll move a Noyo team onto there. The biggest... I will just say, the, the hardest part about... These situations uh, and calculating the actual likelihood of teams making it is that you have situations like these where technically they're not out of it, but not only do they have to accumulate a ton of points for the week, they also need to pass a lot of teams in order to make that happen. All of all of these teams have like uh, a pretty big uh, lead over them. You know, it's not like five points where it's easy to overcome. Like we're talking about like 10, 11 points, at least for these teams. So you're right. A Noyo team could definitely mathematically pull it off, but it's uh, like when you actually look at it, I like I wish I could say there I, I have faith that that could happen. Um, yeah. And then finally, we move on to the teams that are already out of it, which in the case of Red, it's just Chaos Theory because they're the only team that's mathematically unable to catch up. Uh, and then in gold, it is Amber Flight Gaming and Serenite Pang Gang for the exact same reasons. Uh, interestingly enough, these are actually the only teams in. Uh, in legacy right now that have less than a hundred points going into week nine. So that's kind of funny. Yeah. This goes to show yeah. you that there's been a lot of competition this season. I mean, coming up to the last week and a majority of the teams still have a possibility of making the playoffs. That's, that's just saying the kind of kind of competition that we have. So, so yeah, yeah. yeah kudos it's, it's to pretty everybody. cool. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think th- like fighting and clawing to get their way in. And it's, even the uh, last place. Well, you want to see even like the last place team in red and, Amber Flight Gaming and a couple other of these, they're just a few points off from possibly being in, you know, contention. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I will just say two things about that. One, I think it'll be very interesting talking about both Amber Flight and Serenite Pangang, considering what happened with those teams last week of competition. And two, um, I've this is my 10th season of Legacy, and I can safely say I cannot remember a season where this, where there was like this tight of a cluster of teams going into playoffs. Uh, in one conference, because I do sp- I do remember times where we've had like three, four teams at least playing for playoff spots and ended up coming down to the very end. But I can't remember a time where I could say like six, seven teams were like really competing for that. That's it. It really just goes to show how much the competition in THL has evolved over the years. Yeah, so, for sure. I'm excited to yeah, see how this plays sure. out, even if I'm also kind of terrified that my team's not going to make it. <laughs> I think one of the most exciting things about this too right now are the teams that control their own destiny. 
So uh, what you see is like for red, it's redacted. Just a, all they need to do is win and they're in. Same with Dirty Mike and the boys. Same with HSA. Beast mode, if they win big, they're in. Guaranteed. Uh, like a 23-point week. Pod people, if they win, they're maybe in. And Illidan's Death Knights, if they have a big win, they likely are in. A close win, maybe they're in. On the other side, the top three in gold, besides Murgle, who's already in. All those teams, if they win, they're in. And Blood Bloomers win with help. And obviously the long shots have their crazy scenarios. But um, right. just really exciting uh, mix of games here. And uh, really looking forward to seeing what gets put on stream in the, in the few days to come. We're going to have some fireworks, I'm sure. And oh, God. And Literally remember, and figuratively. Yeah. And remember that, exactly. um, that uh, teams that well, we're going to have a cross conference playoff. So, uh, right. so the fourth place team in either conference is going to play the first place team in the other conference. So, uh, just, yeah. Just be mindful of that. Yeah. Desharmo really wants to point that out since Good Luck Albatrosses is obviously sitting at the one in red and will play the four in gold. He, he wants to put team. all the. All the and, potential and force those and guys are such as mind my you, those guys are hungry this. to make it back to the semifinals and this mm -hmm. time make it to the finals. Like you yep. know, this is a team that's determined, knowing all the players on that team. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna if if uh, Stubbs makes it in, in the four, I'm gonna have to call in an emergency brushy tuna sub. Ah. <laughs> I can't, I can't play for the Stubbs. I'm legally not allowed to play for the Stubbs. <laughs> oh God. Dirty Mike and the boys for life. I can't play for the stubs. <laughs> nice. Honestly, now you all make me feel so alienated because I'm the only person on this team who's not on your uh, – I'm the only person in this uh, show tonight who's not part of your pro team, and I feel very sad about that. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fine. True, we barely yeah. want Ron, but we don't know why he's there. <laughs> <laughs> right back at you, Tuna. <laughs> but, yeah, just, just to close it off, I also just think, like, when you see how small some of these gaps are, like, I think what Ron says is pretty accurate is, like, some teams will need bigger wins than others. But it's also, it feels like it's, like, there's no, like, guarantees as far as, like, how many points you'll actually need to make it because of how unpredictable this whole situation is. Like, like what, some t like a team like Beast Motor IDK may need a big win, or they may not need such a big win especially when you consider those two teams are just one point apart like again it, we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens a lot of it is uh a lot of it is just very up in the air i would say yeah absolutely i think uh but oh, think, that pretty much covers it right for yeah, uh, I think that's the playoff it. preview yeah, i think we gotta we get to move on to our next segment which is a uh, last week review uh start off with murgle murgle versus the hot zilfs and ron this is your all right your yeah so we'll we'll take a look back on what got us here to all these scenarios and starting off murgle murgle versus hot zilfs uh battle of the top seeds in gold and murgle murgle coming away with the victory here to claim their uh probable number one seed and guaranteed lock in playoffs uh, dabs with a five game thrilling win over Coles in the one seed. Uh, Buse picking up the big win over Rebobson 3 1 in the two. Donde came through early for Hot Zilfs with a 3 1, but um, unfortunately for him and the Zilfs, the rest of the things kind of went Murgle's way as uh, Debs got a big win on stream over Anfall 3 1, oh <laughs> including a, uh, a thrilling self. Uh, lethal with a puzzle box uh, yep. that uh, Anfall <laughs> didn't feel too great about, I'm sure. And then um, G Kick taking the uh, honestly, five game. Honestly, if you win. watch that clip, I think you could hear the heartbreak in Don today's voice while that happened. He was <laughs> he was trying to stay. Uh, it seemed like he was, you know, to hold it back but, so much. And I don't yeah. blame him. Poor guy. But like uh, yeah, um, I mean, this creates a scenario where Zilfs is very likely still in the playoffs, but they could miss out. It's unlikely, but they could. Um, and Murgle, you know, they can they can relax at this point. Now they did what they had to do. They're seven and one, hundred forty three points, number one seed in gold, and they're looking forward to a playoff run. Oops. Uh, I will just say, I the thing I wasn't expecting. I'm not like so mistake. surprised that Sorry, guys. um, you're good. That like one team won over the other. Um, but I do. I was surprised that this was a four to one instead of a three two. You know, 
think this it's not to say like one team curb stomp the other. I just really thought like um I really thought one both teams would pick up at least two match wins. But I mean, you know what? This is just kind of what happens sometimes. And this was still a very fun uh series to watch unfold. Breaking news, JR calls the Murgle versus Zilfs match a curb stomp. Oh. Tune in next for a uh, new shade that JR is going to throw. Why do you do this to me, Rob? <laughs> Why do you do this to me? Who would love just to troll fun. me? Just Listen. for fun. I just All love right, that. We should move on to... I'm an easy target, but still. Uh, Get him. Uh, we should move on to AFG versus Teenage Mutant yes. Demon Hunters, and I think this one's yours, JR. It is. Honestly? Wow. I mean, I'm, I'm extremely happy for Amberflight Gaming for picking up a big win here, especially when their only loss was a what appears to be a DQ loss. Um, but wow, like, this is the sort of match where, like, I, I, I love Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters, don't get me wrong. I'm very, uh, I, I do, I, I do hope that they uh, pick things up this week and do manage to make playoffs. However, watching Amberflight Gaming uh, gives me hope. It definitely gives me hope for them and how much more they might be able to do next season. I'm really hoping these guys come back. Uh, this this wound up being a pretty interesting match to watch unfold. Uh, Neji Boston, Dragon Rider, Bitbeaker, and Crackwack all picked up wins, including Crackwack picking up his first one of the season finally. Um, and or Mumpkhead getting a DQ win over Christine. Uh, I gotta say, like the biggest surprise, like the biggest surprise to me was Neji Boston over Heatshock. Not because like Neji Boston is not a fantastic player. I've watched his streams. The man is very good. But when you consider the tear Heatshock has been on, like that's really impressive to pull that win off. So yeah, major absolutely. props to these guys. I gotta say. That's uh that's the start of a win streak too for Amber Flight yep. Gaming. They I, were I'm pretty sure in a row. Two I'm in pretty a row. sure last week I called this. I said <laughs> Amber Flight's gonna get this second win this week. Called it the turd upset. I think you did. Nice. Oh, I think he did. I feel like he did. <laughs> Good call. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters, they were dominating gold through the majority of the season, but now uh they've taken two straight losses at basically the worst possible time to put their playoff hopes hopes in doubt and they're in they're in a rough spot right now they they need to you know they really need to win this week they you know it's one of those things where you're like yeah these guys are going to make the playoffs and and they lose to a team that you know that's been kind of having a hard time and yeah yeah uh live it up amber flight you know enjoy crushing those dreams uh you got one more week to keep dream crushing so uh impressed with uh with the wins especially neji boston and dragon rider getting the one and the two that's real impressive crack a whack with the first win of the season and it's even more impressive that the only win that teenage Mutant demon hunters got was a dq yeah <clears throat> so amber flight just absolutely demolishing absolutely they they are coming they're resuming they are coming they're they decided they're going to come in with a vengeance these last few weeks yeah <laughs> unfortunately hitting their stride when it's just a little bit too late um which actually brings us to the next team as well that we have on the docket with Stubbs versus anoyo team and just for you tuna i gave this one to you so you can oh, talk yeah. about how much I'm trash. And, you are uh, trash. My, team, you my are. team got destroyed. So have at it, buddy. <laughs> Listen, no, oh I can't talk too God. much stuff. Except for on you, Ron, because you're just absolute garbage in about every series you play in. <laughs> uh, no, but like, even though even though Stubbs lost I need week, my, you know, I don't you have my popcorn on me, and I'm very disappointed right now. You should have. You know, even though the Stubbs lost the week, you still picked up like 12 points in this late playoff push. So that's still huge. It's almost as close to like, winning the week just because it's so many points and a loss. It's, you know, um, but you know, that, that first scene match, you know, if it would have went the other way, you know, maybe the subs would be in a better place. Um, you know, Ron, since you, uh, are just garbage, but anyways, uh, you know, yeah. big shout out to like Osmonaut though. Um, this man goes and has incredible seasons every year and he's a free to play player. So it's just great to see something like that continually happen over and over again. Um, I'm sorry, who but, are you talking about? Osmonaut. Oh yeah, he does not pay for cards. Yeah, no, neither do I. Generally, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. but it's it's good. To, it's I good to see stuff. I like broke that. that with this expansion. I won't lie. Yeah, uh -huh. see, so you're a liar. Osmonaut didn't. 
So don't don't no, don't I, bring yourself in, you know. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I, well, I'm saying I never. I'm saying I went like six years without putting money into this game. So that means something. That's fair. That's fair. I think. Uh, props yeah. to Oz. Though. Think. That's that's really yeah. impressive. Yeah, you know, he's but, he's um, very dedicated to this game. I he would is. Say. He is. Uh, <laughs> Speaking as a hero teammate of his. When I when I meet him in person, because he's friends with, uh, with me in person, like down the street, and he'll just come up to me and start talking to Hearthstone. I'll be like, Oz buddy <laughs> can we not do this now like let's just go get a burger <laughs> <laughs> what but kind have of burger, you seen though? the nerve question <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh boy what, what kind of burger i don't know one with buns and cheese and burger meat there i heard those <laughs> are the best kind i do too hey, i like know? veggie burgers even though i like meat burgers too i'm just saying <laughs> but how about like match though guys yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you know, um, Big Ted picking up a win, you know, over Z Thud. Kerfin, we uh, got swept by Matt Arms. Matt Arms had been picking it up in Legacy recently. He's been doing really good work this season. Uh, and Tostina Pizza picks up a 3-2 victory over Quaz from the following that week, uh, which really makes sense. Tostina who's brought a really good lineup in the Hunter, Rogue, Warlock, Warrior, which I think is just lines up really well into the uh, Druid, Hunter, Priest, Warlo- uh, Warrior that Quaz brought. Um, but it's it's sad for an Oiltron that they picked up this win so late in the season. Um, so, but it would have been better to see them pick up more wins earlier. It's kind of late for their playoff push, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, there's still a, a sliver of a chance. So, uh, I mean, this gets them there at least to have that sliver of a chance instead of it being extinguished. Absolutely. Yeah, I I really love this team. They like you know uh, not just because I love underdog teams, but because oh, like I I've known a bunch of these players for a while. Um, they're a great group of guys, and at this point, um, you know I'm glad that they've at least gotten their fair share of wins this season. Um, it's definitely impressive that they got a win over two Mike just Dubs. Uh, but yeah, they are. Uh, it's I wish I had more faith that they could pull something off, but you know what? Either way, not a bad season for them, all things considered regardless of what happens. Yeah, for sure. It's a uh, closing out strong is always something to be desired. And, um, you know, we have two teams in our next match as well that, uh, that really needed a late push to close out strong in blood bloomers versus defias brotherhood. And I think this one's yours to Sharma. Yeah. <clears throat> blood bloomers, uh, you know, just like we showed earlier, just kind of still, um, you know, they're in the playoff race and, and, you know, they picked up a, a win, maybe not to the, uh, how do you say it, to the degree that they wanted to. Only a 12-point win is probably one of the weakest wins that you can get. A lot of O3s and 3Os on, on either side. Um, <clears throat> if you really, I mean, this really puts them in a tough tough position, but also a position where they could still make the playoffs. So <clears throat> going down here, there's some really surprising uh, uh, wins and losses here. Um, Sanguine. Uh, sweeping comp comp I know he's having a rough season but a very c- capable player um, and then and then Avagui uh, you know who is who is having a, a pretty good season at four and three gets swept by Ator who is three and four um, and then obviously in the in the four and the five those ha- those are high PR advantages for Defias so th- those are not so surprising but uh but yeah I, I I also find it surprising that none of these except the five seeds brought Demon Hunter and Demon Hunter was always good, and I know a lot of people thought the Twin Slice nerf, Twin Slice nerf, was going to be a, a big issue, and uh, and you know, and it really didn't matter in this match. So I don't even know why I brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's it's fair to point out that the Twin Slice nerf spooked both sides, right? Because barely yeah. anybody brought yeah. Demon Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, eight out of the ten players in this match did not bring Demon Hunter. Just a lot of uh, a lot of sweeps on either side. Uh, pretty crazy to see. Um, Atomos versus Lemons was the only one that wasn't a sweep, and that was a three-one. So, just really lopsided matches. Uh, Mojo Powell having an unbelievably strong season. Uh, Neb Canuck having an excellent season as well. But um, you know, other than the PR differences in those bottom two seeds, the blood bloomers really kind of did what they needed to do with their top three, holding it down. Uh, even though it was only a 12 point yeah. week for, or 15, I guess with the win, um, 
that's that's just enough, you know, to keep them in striking distance of playoffs. And uh, as long as they get just a little bit of help and get another win, they can find themselves fighting for a title. So that's what you need to see for Defias. They're not out. Um, this is this is a rough outcome for them. But, um, you know, if they get some help and they put up a big week, you know, it's still possible. So uh, a lot to play for. I will just say yeah. with this match, with Blood Bloomer's win is definitely big. Um, I'm I'm honestly curious to find out like if they make it or if they don't make it by like what kind of point margin. Because I'm very intrigued thinking like if they had gotten like three, four more points in this match, like how much better of a position would they be in going into uh, this week? And like, is it gonna like come back to bite them that they didn't get any points in those two matches they lost? Well, you know, come we'll Sunday at the out. latest, you'll get the answer to that question. I know, right? <laughs> All right. And then uh, the final match we have in the Gold Conference on our review here, always top deck lethal versus Serenite Pain Gang. And this was a bit surprising. Um, this was just an absolutely backbreaking loss for ATL. At one point, they were the number one team in gold, and they really just started sliding backwards ever since. Um, a 12 to 10 loss to Serenite Pang Gang all but kills their playoff hopes. Uh, again, there is a chance it involves a, a pretty, pretty long shot thing, like a 23 point week, five points or less from Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters, Defias getting 22 or less, Blood Bloomers getting 20, 12 or less and a loss. So, hey, there's a chance, guys. It's not over, but they needed this one bad. And for Serenite Pang Gang, um, They've been out of it for a while, but they're enjoying that Dream Crusher role. You know, they they got to pick up some big wins and keep someone else from the playoffs. And that's the best thing you can do when you know you're already out. Uh, Dr. Bomb D getting the 3-1 over Pond, Free Hong Kong in the one. Uh, we got Blood Hunter taking his first victory of the season. Is that right? I thought he won already. That was, I guess I got no, the, so it was last that, week. We had played. that match result last week yeah. when we were on TT. Oh, oh okay. It was already updated. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's right, because we mentioned it. Um, so Blood Hunter with the 3-1 uh, surprise victory over A2. Uh, Brick picking up a sweep uh, DQ win um, in the three. We had Matty Ebbs with uh, a real sweep over Dark Side in the four. And a sweep in reverse for Travis Cohn. Chrono over Shansui in the five. Um, just way to go, Serenite. You know, the the season's not over. Go and, and take out your frustrations on those teams that might make playoffs. <laughs> take them out. And my boy <laughs> Travis, man, really, really uh, still showing his game. Five and two in the five. So, yeah, Travis had a, He's an not a awesome man to be slept season, on. even though the rest of the team uh, unfortunately didn't have the seasons they were hoping. Uh, Travis had an excellent one. So way to go. Yeah. Well, I remember, I remember Ducharmo remembers this too. We, we tried to hype him up because this was a guy who got a big win for us um, in the first time he subbed for us in the playoffs of Hero. And uh, he got a, it was a very close game five, but his get, his match was what uh, clinched uh, our spot into the semifinals. So like, you know, you put a man in a high pressure situation, he delivers, you gotta, you gotta give the man props. You definitely gain a lot of respect for the man. Absolutely. So I really, I'm really glad to see that he's uh, thriving this season, despite the fact that his team overall uh, is not. All right, you guys ready to move on to the Red Conference? Let's do it. Awesome. So it is Good Luck Albatrosses versus Hearthstone Academy, and I believe this is mine. Um, I mean, what else is there left to say about GLA at this point? Like, Desharmo. Like, do you have anything to add? You're on the team. Like, <laughs> I lost at this point. <laughs> you did, but like, I mean, you're all still having really good seasons despite that. You know, it's. I mean, the only person who doesn't have a winning record right now is Lotus, and even then, he's four or five. So, yep. uh, but yeah, this one, this one was a big match. Uh, like, I think we said last week, Good Luck Albatross was already secured for playoffs. Um, so Hearthstone Academy was really just looking to get a good win against them to kind of keep their hopes up, to, to like ensure their place in playoffs. Unfortunately, they did not get that win, but uh, they did get 10 points. And that's pretty big when you consider the pressure that uh, both Ghost and DeWin were under since uh, 
for those of you who aren't paying attention, uh, GLA won the first three matches. Uh, so like this was a situation where they were they already knew they had to lose. They were just going for points. And so they went down from, from being down uh, 12-2 to 15-10. Uh, so 10 points is still good. It ob we obviously said before they're in a pretty good position as a result of that. Um, but if they had won this match, we obviously would be having a very different conversation about where they stand right now. Uh, but Lotus Knight, Inzi, and Chewbacca picking up some big wins. And then, of course, as I said, Ghost and Dewin getting wins for Hearthstone Academy. So they're still, still a very close race with them as a result. Yeah, and I'd like to point yeah, out the, that when, once you get ahead. the, I mean, I know we're we're ahead in the the, the standings, but one thing that I, I always tell my teammates is once we get in the playoffs, it's that's it. Your records and points don't matter. It's one and done. So we could easily lose the, to the four seed of, of the gold conference, you know. So we just got to make sure that we, we, seen that we don't lose our focus, even though we're you know we've already kind of been in. So we'll wait and see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that's the thing about playoffs. It's going to be very intense, and you're you got you know like every match is going to mean so much because you don't get any kind of like extra weeks to hopefully win. It's like you gotta take you gotta you gotta take it so seriously as a result. It's it's crazy. Yeah, and uh, it was exciting to see Dewin sub in for Hearthstone Academy, making a a crossover appearance from the Wild series mm -hmm. that he's more comfortable in, and picking up a a big five game series victory over the host of the wild show it's me mike v so these two players very familiar with each other already from another series uh that probably would have been a pretty exciting one to watch maybe they got replays somebody should hit them up <laughs> i could reach out to mike or actually to charmo can because he's his legacy yeah. teammate but uh, yeah, this is just one of those that uh, good luck Albatross is, you know, continuing their dominance in HSA. It's not over. You know, uh, you're still at win and in. So all they got to do is is focus, try to pick up that last victory. And even if they lose, if they keep it close in points, they still have a decent shot at playoffs. So uh, it's it's really a, a log jam at the Red Conference right now. And, you know, there's there's a chance. So keep your focus. Keep it rolling one last week and uh, just forget about the loss. It, it didn't happen. doesn't exist. Like all good quarterbacks that throw interceptions, you know, that, throw another you, one. You got to forget it immediately. <laughs> not, not what Tuna said. Don't <laughs> throw another one. <laughs> <laughs> but right. uh, yeah, I think this will take us to our next one. Uh, Tuna, I think this one's yours with yep. redacted versus Illidan's death. Illy Dilly's death nights. Illy Dilly's death Illy nights. Dilly's <laughs> So I just want to say, even though Redacted won, I don't think that win really matters that much because of just how many points both teams got here late in in the year. You know, 15 points for Redacted, 12 here for Illidan's Death Knights. Um, two huge point weeks coming up for uh, both teams that still in the mix here for the last four playoff team slots. And, um, you know, it's, it's good to see that, you know, there was no like 18 to four blowout or something like that. Um, both teams got their respective points. Both teams keeping keeping their mix in and um, you know doing what they can. Redacted did end up getting the win by three points, but you know it's it's still nice to see that just um, both of them getting close to the same amount of points and helping out their own playoff push. Um, you know uh, we had Catman take on Agent PWE. Catman got a three one win there. NHL fan one took down No Glocka three two. Posca took down Jr. Juggalaw three two. Kel took down Siege 3-1, and Snake took down Jerry Damage 3-1 as well. So really, the 3-5 through five seeds here for Redacted is what won them the week. But um, all players for Illidan's Death Knights did what they could to get as many points as possible. Yeah, and good point there, uh, you know, looking at the bottom three, because I think that appears to be a big part of Redacted's PR strategy in the construction of this team. Um, they really have a lot of, uh, of points in the bottom three there uh and even though kel was struggling he finally picked up that first win so if he can keep a streak going too redacted could be a real force to be reckoned with but yeah it's kind of like a dirty yeah. mike and the boys type strategy no real pr too high just everyone floats around like a 300 to 400 pr yeah right. and we so saw it in the, good, in the last like... one hsa was trying it too yeah <clears throat> the new strap. So that being said, though, for uh, Redacted, you know, the one and two seeds do have a modest amount of PR. Like, it's not like they're, uh, like, it's not like 
like especially for agent pwe like 461 is not like a you know uh it's not like a ridiculously low pr for one seed you know like that that's like definitely a pr where you could see like you know being within the range that you would kind of expect like you know you think okay this player can still keep up even with some of the players who have like way above 550 pr so yeah absolutely um, and he's been proving it like the structure yeah I will. I will also say, like this. This was such a like a. Uh, this was such a close one for me. The thing that really frustrated me was if I had beaten Pasca, we would have won, and it was a reverse sweep. And I I keep going back to that match. Like Pasca's a really good player, but I felt like I was so frustrated myself thinking like, um, there were definitely some plays where I could have played it a little better. Not necessarily sure if it would have made a difference, but I could have. Um, and I will just say there was one game where I found out Zephyrus, uh, a way of, in which Zephyrus works that I didn't know about before. So, lesson learned. Hey, learning experiences are good. It's just one of those things where it's like, as I said before, I'm not saying like we'd be guaranteed to make playoffs if we won that, but I would have definitely felt a lot better about this week if um, we didn't uh, lose that match since Redacted, as I said before, has a decent shot of still making it even if they lose this week since they are in second, even with the gaps being as small as they are. For sure. Yeah, but that just makes week nine all the more important. And yeah, uh, next God. up, beyond <laughs> this one, we've got uh, Dirty Mike and the Boys Dirty playing Mike against and the boys. Chaos Theory. Uh, and Desharmo, this one's on you. Yeah, uh, Dirty Mike and the Boys picks up a, a much-needed win to get them back into the race. Um, and a big win, 17-7 to seven with only one loss. Um, and that's to Mike Lowe and the three to Chaos Theory. Chaos Theory, again, still having a tough season. This uh, Normally they get close losses. This wasn't a close one. So Dirty Mike and the boys really showing, uh, you know, that they, they're still in it and they want to win it. So uh, we're looking at, looking at down here, look at all these classes. We've got a lot of priests. <laughs> More priests than I've seen all season uh, versus A lot two. of priests, yeah. And, uh, Seven even, total. Yeah, and even hockey boys bring in, like, uh, what I would consider some of the four work weakest classes <laughs> in the one season. He might have thought they were already officially out, and yeah. he's like, okay, time to have fun. So, yeah, so he might have he might have been memeing it there. We don't know, but it's pretty cool. And, I, I mean, everybody else. I mean, this is the man who brought, who brought four Mechathune decks to uh, America's True. playoffs. True. <laughs> yeah. Anything possible? Yep, a famous move. Yep. Definitely. Uh, that that yeah, that happened. Yeah. Like oh, it's still, like yeah. oh my god. The man is a legend. What can you say? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he is a legend. I love hockey, but man, there's really not much more to but, say about this. But you know, just uh, Dirty Mike and the boys picking up a, a big win, and you know, and the priests, the priest priests, yeah. and the priest I bands mean, too. Look at. The- <laughs> the pants of the yeah. on the other side. That's interesting. <laughs> but I I think this win was really impressive from Dirty Mike. I know that Chaos Theory has been struggling to find a win uh, all season long, but they they were picking up a lot of points in their losses, and they were really hanging around, and this was the one that really finally killed their season. Um, but this was just really important for Dirty Mike and the boys to win this one, to get themselves into a, a much higher seed and contention for playoff appearance. Uh, they did exactly what they needed to do. And on the other side, Chaos Theory, uh, they started off the season with like a 20-point victory uh, with their first win of the season. And then, I don't know, it's like a, a butterfly must have flapped its wings and chaos ensued uh, to the tune of this seven-game le- losing streak that they've been on. Um, but I, I still feel like this is a very strong team and has been all season long for whatever reason, you know, things just kind of went against them. But I hope that we see this team or something close to it next season. And I think they could easily be contenders. Absolutely. You guys ready to move yeah, on? Yeah, I would one? agree. This was, yep. yeah. Go ahead. Finish what you thought. Uh, must that. Yeah. No, I was going to say just uh, definitely a very big win. I don't know. I, I feel like especially with how many points they got maybe if they had lost this week uh we, they wouldn't really we'd probably be saying they're a long shot as opposed to having a very uh being in very strong contention all right well the next one uh beast mode versus pod people two teams needing big wins and like big by lots of points and they got some points but not some big points so not really yeah, either true. team wants this 
Yeah, nobody really moved the needle that much here, but it was huge for Beast Mode just to get that extra three from winning the week in addition to, you know, obviously the extra point that they had as an advantage over pod people here. Um, and I was really impressed. Diamond's boys just coming through. Uh, this is a massive victory uh, just to keep themselves alive, uh, even though I'm sure they would have preferred more points. But pod people was coming in red hot. And uh, pl playoff scenarios are, are just all over the place after this one. Um, mm -hmm. Both teams still in need of a good chunk of points to make playoffs. But for instance, something like a 23 point week from beast mode, which is never, you know, outside of possibility, that's something you can consider. You control your own destiny. If beast mode comes through with, with a full sweep of five players, they guarantee themselves a playoff berth. And it's basically the same scenario for pod people as well, although they have a bit less points and it's a bit less likely. Um, well, especially so since some of their matches have already been played, but um yeah you know they they're hanging around and they're in there so uh this is just an exciting back and forth we got avi taking the 3-1 over arhat in the one zeroshio with the big 3-1 back on zancat the two bill snyder taking it in five over starlax wicked good just on a complete tear i believe he's already played in this week's match and already won as well for pod people and then we've got 8-bit uh, taking a 3-1 over Saku for that final decisive victory for Beast Mode. Um, what more can you say about this than just uh, this was like a, you know, a, a multi-round prize fight where everyone's just throwing punches and staggering, and at the very end, someone just barely comes out on top. Absolutely. I mean, I think the biggest, I think the biggest thing that's actually very interesting was that not only was this match itself very close. But when you actually do the math, you realize how close the standings were between these two particular teams going into this week. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's pretty nuts. Yeah, and both of these teams have like, a, still have a pretty decent chance of making the playoffs. So, right. just depending on how things go this week. But Beast Mode definitely put themselves in a position where they're a little bit better positioned to, to get that spot. Time runs out on me. For sure. All right, shall we move on? Yes, yeah, so, uh... Our next match is going to be Dad Legend versus F2L, and sort of a a, a match that doesn't really uh, doesn't. I mean, I guess it does kind of mean, but still, nonetheless, it really didn't help either of them. No. Yeah, I mean, they both both teams needed a big a big like like you were saying in the last one, Sharma the last wins. Uh, they just need a lot of points here, and neither one of them picked up enough points to really make a dent into that playoff push um so it's kind of sad but you know congrats to f2 f2l red to, for picking up the match win anyways but um you know seeing more points either from dad legend or f2l would have been uh definitely what they wanted um so you know we got me myself and i uh taking on honest zabe in the one seed me myself and i wanted three two liquid ox took down my anodon three one Yellow Dart took down Swelly 3 2. Uh, THL Emer? Lemur, I believe. Lemur. Oh, okay. I Lemur. <laughs> yeah, THL Lemur took down Durden 3 1, and Turd Herder took down Lurper 3 1 as well. So. Yeah, some some interesting uh, matches in the in the four and the five with Durden and uh, and Turd. Turd picking up the win with, with the Paladin and banning Mage <laughs> on top of that. So, yeah, interesting. interesting. I was thinking, what, what an interesting rebel. As they say. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would like to, I would just like to see what he, what his lineup was and what he brought. Um, but this is kind of echoes at the beginning of the season when, you know, when Dano and, and uh, JR were on, we, we talked about dad legend, you know, well, what happened? I mean, they show weeks of like, like, wow, they're still good. And then weeks where like, Oh, come on, you know, like where are those points? And, and uh, you know, I think they're a strong team. And I don't think losing Bill Snyder in the four seed puts him down to the bottom of the ranks. I know Bill Snyder was was gross in the four seed. Yeah. But but you know you look at a lot of these records and they're all floating around the middle. You know they're they're none of them are doing too bad and none of them are doing great either. So you know right. I think it's it was a full team effort and I think I think we we look next season for this team to kind of uh, rebound. Maybe this meta just wasn't – they weren't feeling it or something. But uh, but I think I think we'll find that Dad Legend will rebound next season. 
Yeah, we uh, we just got a kind of a surprise this season. Last season's runner-up, Dad Legend, um, looking like this is the final knife in their chances for playoff contention. Theoretically, as we described in the playoff preview, there's still a super long shot chance that they could make playoffs. But uh, this felt like, you know, F2L almost certainly already out. I guess they have the same kind of scenario, but uh, F2L just embracing that villain narrative and uh, and taking Dad Legend out. And I think this is just one that eliminates both teams in all realistic scenarios. Yeah. All right, you guys ready to move on to the commercial break? Yeah. Let's go ahead Absolutely. and do that. Absolutely. Tuna, so do you ready. have this in front of you? I want to hear you read the commercial. You want me to read the commercial? <laughs> Are we do sure it. we want to do that? Better than right. if I do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Please consider subscribing to our channel. The subscription enables the THL team to help cover the various costs of operating our website as well as improving the quality of our streams and content to our viewers. If you have Amazon Prime slash Twitch Prime, you can sub to the channel for free. For free, folks. Subscribers will get a THL emoticon as well as the THL lovely chat badge. Thank you so much for tuning into Tavern Talk. If you are enjoying our show, make sure you check out Wild Out on Mondays, The Saloon on Tuesday, Heart Center on Wednesdays, right here at twitch.tv slash Team Hearth Legends. What is that? Not enough content for you? Well, we stream THL matches on Fridays from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, Saturdays from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, and on Sundays as well. But wait, that's not all. Oh, I lost my place. We also have incredibly... <laughs> Incredibly written content available at www.teamhearthledges.com. Surely has everything that you must be asking of yourself. Well, my friends, there's more. THL is also home to one of the best Hearthstone Discord servers in this universe. So hit that heart button. The <laughs> in the multiverse. Not even Thanos could snap our Discord away. All right. We are too good and too strong. So hit that heart button and keep the notifications on to make sure you catch our team broadcasting live. We appreciate, we appreciate each and every one of you. Special note to our viewers, check out THL's other social media points and interests. Uh, follow us on Twitter at THL underscore HS. And our Discord is Team Hearth Legends. And don't forget the THL Pal podcast. Yeah. Oh. Don't forget the THL Oh, yeah. And the THL. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it didn't say uh, well, podcast a, with it. I, was like, I didn't know perfect. what this was. That's, a, that's, a, that's a Dano <laughs> thing. Dano, like for the first three yeah. shows, forgot his own podcast <laughs> and then you come in and you do the same thing so dano i didn't know it was a podcast uh, you are it just says missed. thl pal i don't know uh so, so i mean Tuna i was the new dano oh, yeah. confirmed i mainly oh, no. just wanted to test to see if you were actually literate so uh color me surprised uh tuna able to read an entire block of text <laughs> it's true it took it took a whole school of fish to read it <laughs> but we did it. We got there. <laughs> it was excellent. You well did a great played, job, good man. Sir. Well played. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on oh, to uh, this week's preview. So we'll start with the gold conference. And it starts with me. Uh, yeah. Murgle Murgle versus the Stubbs. And uh, ignore that uh, rope countdown. Let me take that out. Don't know why that's there. Let's take that out. All right. Uh, this is a, a big match for both of these teams. Or not really not both of these teams. Murgle Murgle already clinched. Um, and uh, looking at the stats earlier, the Stubbs, it's still in a very good position. I think that they're in a position where if they win out, I think that they're, they're good. They're in. Um, so they're looking to pick up a uh, – a, to finish winning, finish up – sorry, finish all their matches winning. So right now they're they're down one match. Uh, we're not down on match, but they're one and one right now. They lost one match and looking to win the last three. So what we got left is Ron Mexico and Dabs, uh, Osmanot and Buse and Kuru Finway and Debs. Um, I'm gonna go uh, with a uh, uh, not surprising here. I think Ron. I think you take the one. I really like. Hey, all right. I really like what you got. Um, we're playing on stream actually Saturday at eight. There you go. Yes, I want to see that. Um. I like Oz. Ron, are you going to dab if you win? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, out of respect for dabs, I would uh, allow. I would definitely allow the dab from him if he wins, but uh, I will refrain if I win. I like um, I like Oz in the two. Um, I think Oz Oz is good. 
It's got I, I do like Priest um, into some of the classes that that he brought. I think Priest is a little better versus Demon Hunter now. I think uh, I think it it can can do okay versus Druid and Warrior. So um, I think it's okay here. Um, and then I'm gonna go in the four and the five. I'm gonna go. I'm sorry, in the four and five. The four uh, Debs. So I'm gonna go three two to Stubs, winning the one two and the three, and then losing in the four and the five. Mm, nice. What do you think, Jr? I'm definitely agreeing with Ron winning in the one. Um, and I'm going to say Oz wins in the two. The four is such a hard call because I because of the classes, but I'm going to give it to Debs because I'm a little skeptical of Kerr Finway not bringing uh, Warrior. So I'm going to say, I am going to also say that the Stubbs win it three to two. Brushy? Uh, obviously, I got Dabs in the one seed. Yes, uh, no curse. <laughs> Thank you, Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, he did it for the no, first reason. Bad. I think he actually did it because he thinks you're gonna oh, lose. Not <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, it's still it, it works to not curse me, so I'm I'm happy oh, about boy. it. Oh boy, I don't know. I I really like Druid into Druid into your uh, lineup, and uh, Warlock could be a little problematic depending on the Warlock as well. So that's why I want Dabs. Uh, gonna root for my boy Osmanaut in the second seed. Uh, obviously, third seed Big Ted one because he's a Sheets fan, and that's the correct answer. Uh, I have Kofinui. <laughs> I have Kofinui in the four seed winning. Or uh, I'd like the Mage Priest single handedly over entire Deb's lineup, and then obviously uh, the last matchup has already been decided. So I got, uh, I think three two for my girl, my girl. No, I didn't. I have three two with those dubs. I only had Ron in Wait. the bottom seed losing. Oh yeah, because right, yeah. right, right. And Ron, Ron, quickly, no, what, yeah, do you, what yeah. do you got? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to Oh, yeah, take I mean, uh, like like Buse called in the chat, I was going to go with the 5-0, but I had to check my notes real quick. I'm like, oh, all right, fine. <laughs> There's already a decided one. Okay, 4-1 stubs. Easy. No bias. Easy. Awesome. <laughs> well, let's move on to the Easy next one. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Hot Zilfs versus Blood Boomers on this one. All right, yeah. this one's JR. Take it away, JR. Ah, damn it. I'm trying to load my thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about this one because this is like, as you kind of said, the Zilfs are basically locked in, but not entirely. But at the very least, even if they are more or less locked, uh, they're playing against another playoff contender, and that makes Blood Bloomers climb to playoffs a bit more challenging. Um, I am definitely giving it to. So, my prediction, just playoff wise, is that uh, the Stubs are going to make it over Blood Bloomers. So, and I think the Zilfs are going to win this week because, especially after that week, uh, knowing that they're not locked, but they uh, but they are more or less locked. They're probably still thinking, let's finish things off strong, get a win against this team, uh, play spoiler, etc. So I'm going to say Adamos beats Coles. I think Coles is, is insane, but Adamos ha is 7-1 right now. So it's kind of hard to bet against that. I'm going to say Robobson beats Sanguine, even though I could easily see her pulling off an upset. Uh, Donde beats Ator. Uh, Anvil beats Medusa's. And we'll say that uh, Silver T Fox Demon beats Jimphalos. So I'm going to say 3-2 Zilps. Nice. Ron, what do you think? Um, I think I might have copied, uh, copied your homework on this one, JR, here. I've got Atomos taking the oh. one seed <laughs> over I'm literally Coles. just seeing that. <laughs> I've got Robobson in the two over Sanguine. Uh, Donde taking the three. I think Anfall is going to win in the four, and I'm giving it to Silver in the five for a 3-2 Zilfs. And this should punch, punch the playoff ticket for them. Uh, Blood Bloomers, in fairness, I mean, this is one of the teams standing in their way. So it's it's totally possible for a 5-0, 20-point something week, and they could even knock Zilfs out. But I think more likely we're going to see a bit of a back and forth, and it's not going to be enough for Bloomers to get in, and uh, Zilfs is going to make playoffs here. I'm going to... I'm going to almost agree with you the only one i'm going to change is sanguine and ribopsin i like sanguine's classes into ribopsin's classes um so i'm gonna go sanguine over rebob and blood boomers win three two Ooh. all right Brushy, what do you i say uh i got three two zilfs i got actually i have coles upsetting adamas uh sanguine beating I don't know if call that an upset though but yeah well it's only <laughs> because adamas seven and one like just yeah. from the Good season, like just Dom was having a good season. Yeah, That's the right. only Mark loss was Heat Shock, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Fall winning in the four seed and right. Silver T Fox in the five. Nice. So. All right. 
let's move on to the next one. Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters versus uh, Always Top Deck Lethal. All right. All right. So I've got this one here, and um, Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters, the losers of two straight, um, falling fast from the top of the Gold Conference, and ATL also on a backslide themselves, uh, just having come off of a loss to Serenite Pain Gang. This game is big for both teams. Uh, there's a chance, however minimal, that ATL can still make playoffs, and it starts with a big win. For Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters, all they got to do is get a victory, and they probably make it. And I think that's what they're going to do here, coming through in the clutch. I'm giving it to Heat Shock in the one. I think Jimmy E. Choose takes the win over A2 in the two. Uh, I've got your Mumkhead picking up the win in the three seed. And ATL, not without pride, going to grab a couple of victories in the four and the five. Matty Ebbs beating Super Murloc. I don't know what you're doing with those classes in the final week of the season here, Murloc, but uh, seems seems risky to me. I don't think it's going to pay off. And uh, Shunsui sending Rage Doppel to the Shadow Realm with a five seed victory. Uh, three, two Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters, but ATL is going to make him remember it. Give him some bruises along the way. Jared, what do you think? You know, I was literally going to say the same thing about Murloc that Ron did, so I'm a little upset right now. I'm not going to lie. It's like <laughs> Murloc literally typed in chat, I'm here for the, uh, for I'm basically here for JR to vote against me. Um, which, I mean, you know what, Murloc? You know what, Murloc? I will say, I was definitely leaning towards trying to vote for you this week. But between your class selection and the fact that you're going up against my boy, Matty Ebbs, like... I mean, you're making it really hard for me. I'm just saying right now. I love you, but you're making it very hard for me. No matter how grateful I am to you that you got your wife to sub for us uh, three weeks this week, uh, three weeks this season. So with three that said, I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like out of it today. It's Thursday. That's my excuse. Uh, I'm going to say Heat Shock beats uh, Pond. I'm actually going to say A2 ends his his uh, losing streak and beats Jimmy Eat Shoes in an upset. Uh, I'm going to say. Uh, or Mumkhead takes down Brick, Matty Ebbs takes down Super Murloc, and then Rage Doppel takes down Shunsui. So I'm going to say the Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters uh, win this one 3-2. to two. And I will just say, between them, the Stubbs and Blood Bloomers, this is actually the team that's at least the most likely to oh, still oh make God. it if they, lo if they lose this week. Because when you look at the 17-point difference, even if ATL do pull off an upset here, it's still very unlikely that it's going to, uh, you know, be enough to actually overtake that unless that's a full sweep. So I feel pretty good about Teenage Mutant Demon Hunter's chances, whether they win or lose. I'm going to have to agree with you on this one, uh, JR. Down the board, I think, I, think you got, I think you picked everything that I would have picked. So, Rushy, real quick, what do you think? All right, I got Heat Shock, Jimmy Choose, Brick, Super Murloc, and Sun Shui. 3-2 Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters. Okay, just different, put, different right. teams, cool. Yep. Nice. Uh, awesome. Tomorrow at 9 p.m. You can watch Super Murloc play his weird classes. On nice. I, I, that's something I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question from Matt in the chat. Uh, there's a class that Super Murloc brought called S. We don't really know what this is, but um, <laughs> I'm excited to see. Maybe... I know what it is, but I can't say it on stream. <laughs> <laughs> you can't Me give neither. It <laughs> I really hope S doesn't get banned because I want to see it's, what It's like an episode of SpongeBob. You'll have to replace whatever I say with a dolphin noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, JR. Remember type. that? Thank you. All right, JR. The, the next one's yours, buddy. Defias Brotherhood versus oh. Serenite Pang Gang. I didn't realize the next one was mine. Okay, then. It says your name right there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, well, now I see it. You know what? Maybe I just I wasn't able to breathe for the past like five, ten minutes. Who knows, buddy? <laughs> um, That's cool. So that was that is... was the majority of Tuna's life. Yeah, you're right. Oh, God. What have I done? <laughs> I'm enabling you. Low hanging fruit. Uh, Defias Brotherhood. Oh. So we said before, Defias basically needs a miracle to make it, and Serenite Pangang is out. Uh, in theory, though, this could be a big week for Defias to get like a huge win. But at the same time, I kind of said that last week about ATL, and we kind of saw how that went down. So I don't really feel confident saying that, um, or feel like I should assume that's going to happen. So let's see. I'm going to say Dr. Bombi wins the one. Battle of the one sevens in the two. My God, uh, I'm gonna say Comp takes it in the two. I'm gonna say Avogui takes the three. Nepkanuk takes the four, and Mojo Powell takes the five. So we'll say Defias takes this four to one. I feel like you're copying me again. 
Uh, I literally didn't see your choices <laughs> until you just mentioned it, honestly. I swear. I think I think Sarah and I Pan Gang pick up another win here. Um, Ooh. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Dr. Bomb D. I think he takes a one. I think he picks up another win. I do... Because Lemons didn't bring Sham, and that's why. Comp, <laughs> Comp and Blood Hunter both are one and seven, both needing wins. Uh, I'm going to give this one to Comp. I think Comp takes this one. I do like his class. I do like Rogue a little better than Warlock. Um, I'm going to say my boy Schwa Swash Murgler picks up his first win over a Vogwi. Uh, I'm going to say Neb Canuck picks the win in the four. And I'm going to say my boy Travis picks the win in the five. So the one, three, and five for Saturday Night Pain Gang. And they're going to end the season three uh, with a win and win 3-2. Bold. I like it. Ron, what do you think? I see. Spicy, uh, so spicy. yeah, I, I had the same picks as JR here. Um, I think this is a week that Defias really needs a 5-0, and I think um, Dr. Bomb D is going to deny that with the win and the one. But the rest of the way, I see it going Defias's way. They've got a lot to play for. Uh, they're motivated. You know, if they pick up a big series of, of victories, they still could squeak their way into the playoffs. And um, the one I was kind of conflicted about was the five, but I just I can't see myself picking against Mojo Powell. He's been so insanely dominant all season long. Um, I think he gets that one, and I think it goes 4-1 Defias here. Rushy, quickly, what do you got? I accidentally put a 5-0 sweep for Defias before I realized it. <laughs> so. <laughs> accidentally, but sticks well, with I was, it. All right. I was man going through it. I was like, oh, 5-0 Defias. All right, 5-0 Defias. <laughs> the right, so. the only other thing I want to say about this match is that uh, uh, Desharmo, do you remember that season we played together and you were a four seed in Legacy? Mm-hmm. Mojo Powell in the five seed is somewhat like that. It's wrong. Because <laughs> he's just, he's too, he's yeah. so good. Like yeah. his seven and one record, like kind of shows that, you know, like if you've played with him long enough, you know, like this is, I think the only time he's been a five seed, at least since I've known him. So like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Probably won't get to stay. Like, no, he's not going to be there next season. Yeah. He's not staying a five seed. No way. At the rate he's going. No way. All right. We're going to move to the last match of the gold conference. And this one's on me. This is a Noyo team versus Amber flight gaming. And you know, you know me guys, I'm a big Noyo team fan because I play on their hero team, but I'm going <laughs> to say Amber flight gaming pick they, they get their third win of the season. I'm sorry, Matt. I love, I love me some Noyo team, but I'm, I'm on the Amber flight gaming uh, train here. I think they're going to pick up the win and here's how I think they're going to do it. I think, uh, I think, a mage picks up the win, the win and the one. Then I think Dragon Rider is going to pick up the the win and the two. I think uh, Christine picks up her second win in the three. I'm going to give it to my boy Matt in the four, and then I'm going to say there's going to be a huge upset in Krakowak uh, picking up a second win over Totino's Pizza. I know there's some really bold <laughs> predictions here, but I think Amberflight win Gaming picks a win th wins three two. Nice. What do you think, uh, uh, Brushy? What do you think? Uh, I also actually had 3 2 in Reflect Gaming. I have a Maj 10 winning in the 1 seed, Dragon Rider winning in the 2 seed, Christine actually winning in the 3 seed, Bit Beaker winning in the 4 seed, and then Tostinos winning in the 5 seed. I, uh, I, I just think the Dragon Rider is going to win that 2 seed just because of the classes alone. So I what think that's think, what Ron? it breaks. Um, well, it. It may be less bold than you originally thought, I know, Desharmo, right? because I also think Amber Flight <laughs> is going to get their third. Oh, now I just cursed them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, actually, I just I feel like they oh really hit their stride, and yeah. if this was a longer season, they might be primed to actually work their way into the playoffs. Um, Neji Boston has been on fire all season long. It's just the rest of the team that hasn't really been picking up the pace. But Dragon Rider as a sub was huge, and she's been incredible this season with only one loss. Um, we've got Christine, who's still been struggling. Bitbeaker and Krakowak have been struggling as well. But I think one of them is going to be able to, to find a win here. I've got it going to Neji in the one, uh, Dragon Rider in the two. Uh, sorry, Matt. Uh, you know, I, I think... Uh, this is going to kill that Anoyo team 
sliver of a chance to make playoffs and uh and then you'll have to blame yourself too so that'll be fun um i've got <laughs> disco uh taking the victory in the three seed uh bitbeaker grabbing it in the four and totino's in the five for a three to two amber flight <laughs> what do you think no love Rushy? hello <laughs> Oh, hello, hello. I'll, I'll be honest. So I'll be honest, Ron. I saw right, your totally predictions. Brushy. Never mind, you already picked it. Oh. No, I, did, I already picked your brushy, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. you're good. Yeah, he already went. Just JR, um, JR. Yeah, you I was going to say, yeah, so I, I, I made my picks, and then before saying anything, I looked at Ron's, and I was like, oh, look at that. We match again. Oh, so 3-2 so, Amberflight Gaming. <laughs> the only thing I will just add is that it's very hard for me to pick Dragon Rider over Mad at Arms because I love the man to pieces. He knows that. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just feeling a bit more confident uh, in her right now, despite the fact that Matt's obviously having a pretty strong season as far as his personal record. So yeah, I, I think that one's going to be really close one way or another. All right, let's uh, go to the Red Conference. And we're going to talk about the first match, uh, GLA versus Dad Legend. Really a, a kind of no stakes needed match. Dad Legend kind of kind of out of it already, and GLA already locked up the one. So, And only three matches left. Yep, your just, opportunity just to talk your trash on Mayan before he comes back for two straight weeks. Yep, uh, yeah, I, well, he's going yeah, to come back next week, so if he beats me, he can... <laughs> he can uh, he can rag about that. He did beat me in a yep. playoffs last season, so that will not be happening this season. <laughs> Ooh, already oh, throwing that, that shade. Yikes, <laughs> Brushy, this one's on you, buddy. Oh, I mean, you already said everything. <laughs> I'll just say my predictions. <laughs> okay, go for it. Uh, clearly, in the three seed, yeah, there's right. one of one person winning. Uh, my on it on. It's All me, right. Mike V, winning in the four seed, and Chewbacca I got winning in the five seed here. This oh. Week. <laughs> So three two GLA just three two GLA, but yeah, not just... because of me, right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I would like to point out the the symmetry and the one two three between the both teams and the classes brought and banned so far. So oh yeah, there's a symmetry. That's, yeah, there. I think we can oh, anticipate God, right. a double warrior ban from Desharmo and Myanodon here, considering the way the spoilers. I mean, I mean, hey, who knows? I just Maybe one of them that... was a curveball, but... I just like find it funny that down. there were one player on each team who did not bring Demon Hunter. <laughs> I mean, I know Chewbacca's a rebel, but I'm still surprised. So what do you th how do you think this is going to go, Ron? Um, I think this one is, uh, again, like probably not really relevant. Dad Legend needed to basically dominate to get into the playoffs, and I don't think that's happening. Zabe already got the win. Two's already with the sub and a sweep over Dart. Um, I think Desharmo is going to beat up uh, beat up on Mayan in the three seed. I think uh, Mike takes a victory in the four and Shu in the five for a four to one GLA. Um, Dad Legend just gets their their dreams ground into dust. JR, what do you think? Uh, I'm actually going to side with Tuna on this one, which uh, is a weird sentence to say. I will not not really because is. of Tuna himself, because I'm saying I'm siding with actual Tuna right now. So yes. uh, yeah, I'm going to say Myanodon takes the three, but Mike yes. V and Chewbacca take the four and five. I I think I think I could. I'm not saying Ducharmo's outright going to lose. I will say though, if I had to pick one of those matches that I think is likely to be an upset, where um, I think uh, Dad Legend picks up their second win, uh, I would say. Uh, the three seed is what's going to happen, despite the fact that, as we've all pointed out, Ducharmo does not belong in the three seed. And no, he belongs in the five seed. It's, yeah. Like, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow Solid. I still maintain a below four. I didn't even PR. mean to set that up for I, the record. I don't know how it happens every season, but my Anadon, if my Anadon beats me, I, I would not call that an upset. He is really good and does not need to be in the three seed either. So, um, yeah, that's true. also pretty crazy. So, uh, yeah. I, 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 it's going to be a really close match, but I'm glad to face my Anadon again. Hopefully I can get the win. We'll see. Uh, right. I'm not going to be laying down, you know, I'm, I'm going to be trying my best and, uh, and, you know, trying to get, get us some momentum into the playoffs. Exactly. Yeah. That's All the right, right attitude. Well, uh, let's go on to the, the very next match. Uh, hold on. Sorry, guys. Um, this one is dirty Mike and the boys. I'm not sorry, not dirty Mike and the boys Hearthstone, oh. uh, redacted and pod people. My bad. 
Uh, and JR, this one's yours. And pod people, and this one is mine. Yes. So uh, I'm just trying to double check. I think there's two matches. Yes, that's correct. So this this chart needs to be updated. Saku defeated Snake Fods three to two. Ooh, that's a big win. Saku. Pod nice. people are now up eight to four right now, and that's pretty. That's pretty relevant. Yeah, and that's a big upset because from, from Saku. That's a pretty big upset right there. Yeah. Like we all know, Saku can play hard. PR is that enough for BGH? That might be. I yeah, have to, that's I have like to look at the sheets. That's real pretty quick. big. That's a big game, Hunter man. Um, let, me, let me look this up. Real yeah, quick. I'll so because I know yeah, we have those stats lying around. Go keep going. Is there technically more than that? What for Saku? Oh, yeah. So, so, so I will say um, the big the the whole thing with this match that has me very torn is that uh, I'm very much kind of in this position of who do I want to win? Because if I... Uh, Pod People is a team right behind us, so we don't want them to win. But at the same time, we could still pass them even if both of our teams win this week. Redacted, uh, we could theoretically pass, but there's more of a gap. So uh, we, you know, I probably in theory want them to win just so that uh, there's like, you know, more, possi more possibilities for us to pass other teams. But it's, it's a tough one either way. So uh, with that said, that means we only have the one to three seeds to evaluate. And God, this is hard. Uh, all right. I'm going to say Agent PWE beats our hat because despite the PR difference, I think he's still really having a fa uh, pretty fantastic season. Um, I'm going to say Zoroshio wins over Noglaco, uh because he brought Paladin but didn't bring Demon Hunter. But I still think he's got a good lineup going there. Um, and I think Pasca, I mean, he beat me. I'm, I feel obligated to pick him, especially when he actually brought Demon Hunter uh, and he's going to take down Starlax. So I still think uh, pop people are going to take this, but barely. I yeah, think it's going to be a very, uh, very close one. And I'm looking here. Saku does have the BGH at the moment last week. Oh, uh, wow. Oh, yeah, Saku. The biggest challenger to BGH for <laughs> yeah, Saku is it's... Saku. Yeah, yeah, so it's so, good. <laughs> so uh, a one hundred and uh, two hundred and twelve PR difference there. The next one below that is two oh one with Bill Snyder over Liquid Ops. Oh wow! So, yeah. Oh man! All right, I mean, but this uh, is, just yeah. to continue on the picks here uh, before we get too sidetracked on BGH. Um, <laughs> I think uh, this this should be pretty close. I had it going 3-2 to Redacted, but that was prior to the Saku victory. So it's going to flip to 3-2 pod people. Um, I think Arhat wins the one. I'm giving it to Glocko in the two. Pasca in the three. Wicked Good already won. And Saku already won. So uh, this might be enough for pod people to make playoffs. It's pretty exciting. And they and they do this every season. I guess it's, not a, it's like without fail. At the yeah. very end of the season. Yeah, they, look out. Yeah. Here they come. They they're coming. Here comes the pot. But in their defense though, with last season, um, the difference the difference last season uh, uh was that they were uh they did kind of like pull some like additional weight at the end of the season. Um, but they never looked like they were just outright out. It just happened to be that like towards the very end they put themselves in a pretty favorable position. Um where like I think if I remember correctly, they still could have made playoffs if they lost to my team in the last week uh, because they had already had a modest amount of points at that point. So, uh, so yeah, they're... Uh, yeah, so they're, it seems, uh, seems to be their MO. Know, yeah, like, the, like, I was going to say, like, this would definitely be, like, more of a long shot for them, like, more of a, like, a real upset since last season they did... Uh, it wasn't, like, so shocking when we actually got to this point in the week where they really were in a more favorable position by comparison to now. Sure. What about you, Tuna? What do you, how do you think this match is going to play out? Uh, I actually had 4-1 pod people. I had Saku winning that before we found out. Uh, what, hey, had... it's oh it's in the God. sheet. Uh, it is. I'd be the first to call him a liar, but it's there. There's evidence. He <laughs> called it. Yeah, Good, right. It's it Saku. You, I love Saku. You know, I had a vote for Saku. Uh, I have Arhat taking man. down the one, Zoroshio taking down the two, Pasca taking down the three, and then obviously the four and five have already been decided. One to the pod people with Wicked and Saku. And awesome. I'm going to agree as well. You, I'm going to agree exactly with Brushy. I think it goes exactly that way. I wow. think I think this might be a dagger for Redacted if it does go that way. We'll see. Yep. This is not yeah, the way. That could, that could knock him out. It, it's yeah. very possible. 
yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, a lot of teams could pass them because, like, just the difference between their team should, and my team is only six points. Yeah, we should yeah. move on to six. the next one because we're, yeah. we're getting... No, 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 yeah. go on, go on. Right. I'm just saying, like, it's... You're right, it could is, very much be a dagger. Uh, Ron, this one's on you. This is uh, Dirty Mike and the Boys and Hearthstone Academy. All right, so Dirty Mike and the Boys, Hearthstone Academy, already tied up six to six. Um, and really, whichever team wins is in. And whichever team loses might be in, but very likely will miss playoffs. So some exciting three matches to go. Um, obviously, Mako and Sage, um, or sorry, Mako and Astral Frog have already won their matches. Okay, uh, um, both five game series. A uh, uh, alert, I guess you could call it. I'm trying to find. We oh, got, no. oh, we got a we got an Result. update. Yeah, yes. booze booze beats Tony Montana in the two three one. So Hearthstone oh, Academy is up no. ten seven. Oh, oh, that's big! Wow, that's, that's so pretty big. huge. Yeah. All right. So um, I was watching. I was watching that happen live because I'm in their Discord, watching it ping while we were oh casting my here. God. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> well, I had picked no. Tony to to win that one, but good, good on you, Booze. He's having a killer season so far. I do think Fuel is going to take the win in the one seed, and I'm giving it to Ghost in the three. So uh, I gotta figure out how that plays out now. Read it to HSA. Three to two HSA. HSA is how it flips, yeah. Yep. One because All it's right. two to one HSA, one more each, three to two. Yeah, I'm gonna say uh I'm gonna echo that. I'm gonna say ghost takes that and then fuel takes it in the one. Um so yeah. Uh HSA winning, I mean it seems like it could be very close either way, but uh I think you know HSA wins it. I'm pretty sure they're guaranteed the spot. Um, unless they get like a low score, but considering they've already got uh, 10 points and they'd have at least 14 points uh, worth of a win, 17 if you count the three points, um, that definitely should be enough. Even if yeah, uh, I believe like a it. Bunch I believe of it is below them win. Yeah, and so. there's there's still a route where both of these teams could make it into the playoffs. You know, even yeah. if, even if Dirty Mike loses, um, that's still it's still possible. Um, but you know, this is a big a big a uh, big win from booze over over tony and i'm gonna have to echo with you guys i think ghost takes the three and i think uh i think hearthstone academy wins three two i do get i do give it to fuel in the one yeah i'm only slightly disappointed that this match already has so many things decided as we're talking about it because this is uh the matchup between uh, i mean where are they in the standings like two and three right now or three and four let me look real quick i just um, it up right now um Let's see. Uh, redacted. Two and, two, three and two and four. four. Three and four. Three and four. Well, it, as as the real time standings go, it's two and three. But yeah, yeah. I mean, there's more. So True. at the start of the week. Yeah. But yeah, uh, just incredible series of matches. Maybe we, one of these last ones gets on stream. It'd still be pretty exciting to see with the series in doubt. This probably decides a, a red playoff team. So here's hoping. And it's a lot of how of how some of these matches are going with redacted playing, um, you know pod people and dirty mike playing hearthstone academy there might be a chance where two teams that are in the playoff race this right now if we were to stop at this moment would not be in it next week uh redacted yeah. and uh not redacted uh, redacted and dirty mike and the boys might fall out and then we might see beast mode and pod people or even illidan's death knights bump up there yeah all right you ready to move on to the next one did we get all the picks yeah. in for everybody 5-0 dmb you, you sure you, you want to stick with that? I can't do that. Yep. I can't, I'm not changing my prediction. I already wrote it down. All right. No nice. changes. 5 0 nice. DMB. He has spoken. That's my, that's my boys over there. 5 0 DMB. Yes. Nothing Solid. less. <laughs> that's adorable. Yeah. And I, I, I do point out that um, Lefty mentioned that's a classic DMB and HSA rivalry. They, these two teams yep. have been around a long time. <laughs> HSA has yeah. won three championships, and Dirty Mike and the Boys has been around since since I can remember, since I've been here. So. Yeah, we got one championship on DMB. Yeah. Nice. So. All right. All right. So, Tuna, yours is the next one here with Beast right. Mode versus Chaos Theory. Chaos Theory. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is a much win week for Beast Mode. Uh, so, we'll see how they you know they need to line up their cards right and try to try to get as many points as possible. Hopefully, like a five zero from them would be huge. But. Uh, I actually have them with a 4-1 this uh, week. There is a result in that is not on oh. the sheet. Uh, <gasps> Avi, Avi beats uh, Markshire 
Oh, that doesn't Damn change it. one at all. That's me. <laughs> Damn it. Yep, that's that's a good win. So Mark Shire stepping oh, in rough. as a sub for Hockey Boys right at the yep. end there. I knew th I knew it could end that way, but I I had a lot of faith in Mark Shire, and that faith was misplaced. It's all good. <laughs> Damn it. All right, but go ahead with the rest yep. of the picks here, Tim. So Avi, I had Avi taking on the winning the one seed, Bill Snyder winning in the two seed, Mike Lowe winning in the three seed, Copper Talon winning in the four seed, and Eight Bit winning in the five seed. Four one beast mode. Nice. What do you think, Ron? That's a big enough win that uh, that could get them in the playoffs for sure. Yeah. Um, I called it the other way actually. I think Chaos Theory plays for pride and uh, tries to tries to ruin Diamond's dreams here and curse him again. I think uh, Avi. Well, I mean, I had him pick in, in the in the one. Obviously, he won already. Uh, Isocles, I think, takes the win in the two seed. I've got Mike Lowe in the three. I think F. Sirachi takes the win in the four and 8-bit in the five for a three to two for Chaos Theory. I'm going to go uh, Beast Mode. I think I think Beast Mode um, uh, does take the win here. Um, Avi's got the one. I think that really kind of sets him up. I, I know Mark Shire is a really good player and, you know, it, it's they're, they're, it's a mirror match, you know, and so I think Avi just just had the upper hand there, but I'm gonna go Avi in the one, Zancat in the three, uh, and then Ape in the in the five, and I think they they uh, they take it three zero, and punch their way into the playoffs. I'm sorry, three two, they punch their way into the playoffs. Oh. It's like three zero. Hold on. <laughs> Is anybody else with the prediction to the um, JR, right? Yes. So. Uh, I mean, I will admit I did have Mark Shire winning this one, um, but I also had Chaos Theory winning this four to one. So now I just have them winning three to two. I do think Isocles is going to take down Bill Snyder. Both of these guys have been struggling, but if I'm being honest, despite uh, Bill Snyder bringing Demon Hunter, I do uh, prefer Isocles lineup in this case. Um, I definitely giving Mike Lowe the edge here just because uh, after the conversation I had with him this week, I am not picking against him and I really want him to win. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to say F. Sirachi takes it in the four uh, and Ape it takes it in the five. So I'm saying, yeah, three to two, chaos theory. Um, and I'm not just saying that because it would be really nice for my team if they managed to beat Beast Mode this week <laughs> and pull off the upset. All right. right, let's go on to the next that match. That takes us to the, the final match of we the entire the regular last, season. Yeah. And there is a result in this one, too, that's not up here. Uh, yes, Siege there is. does beat uh, THL Lemur 3-0, to zero, so now it's tied 4-4. Four to four. Oh, that's big. My prediction my prediction's I still know. alive. I was going to say, <laughs> Tuna, thank you for that prediction. I really got to give you props for that. It's very appreciated. Ron, <laughs> shame on you. Yeah, take that, Ron. <laughs> And Take I think that I think this one's mine, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it is. Uh, it is. So uh, a very important match uh, for for uh, Illidan's Death Knights. This is this is a you know I, I really think to get into the playoffs, I really think they need to to win four matches here, not just not just three. I think they need to win the the, the remaining three that they have left. Um, and uh, it's I, I mean, let's start from the bottom up. I think Jerry does take the take the five, and you know I'm going to give it to you in the three, Jr. I think it comes down to the one seed. I think it comes down to Catman M M M I, um, if if uh, if they're going to really get there or not. And you know what? I'm leaning towards Catman really pushing. Uh, I do like that Hunter into the Mage, um, and I, I do think that there's there's some there, the classes line up a little bit better in Catman's favor. So. I'm going to say they do it. I'm going to say Illidan's Death Knight win 4-1 and punch their way into the playoffs. All right. Appreciate it. Having some faith in Illy Dilly. My team doesn't get it, hasn't gotten that much love these last few weeks, so I'm not going to lie. It's very cathartic. <laughs> well, just, now you got to do it. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, so, well, fun, fun fact, I'm actually playing against Swelly tonight uh, at 10 o'clock. So... I'm like, I need to get that match over with just to, like, relieve the nerves. Um, so I'm looking forward to hopefully, uh, you know, taking the lead for our team. Hope. Nice. Uh, yeah, Ron, big game. what do you think? Um, I originally was giving it to F2L Red as uh, the Dream Crusher role, but that big win by Siege is going to flip my pick here. Uh, I think MMI takes it in the one. I've got Ox already winning, obviously. 
Um, I do think JR is going to get the win over Swelly in the three. And with Siege's win in the four over Lemur, uh, that means um, Jerry Damage going to take it home with uh, a three to two IDK Illy Dilly uh, getting the victory and possibly getting enough for playoffs. We'll see. Uh, Brushy, what do you think, real quick? Attention's uh, got, killing me, man. I got, <laughs> I got four one IDK. Catman taking the one seed. Ox obviously won the two seed already. JR's going to win the three. Seize obviously we already won the four. And Jerry's going to take the five. Hey, future captain of the unknown, we agree. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Nice. The unknown <laughs> captains. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of, I kind of threw that out there, and nobody knows about it yet. <laughs> yeah. That's sneak right. They'll know one there. day. Yeah, yeah sneak, sneak preview. preview for anyone. Hiding, there. hiding at the end of Tavern Talk. Yes. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, we're we're kind of pushing. For time, we're at an hour and a half already, uh, but we do have right. a few questions I, for. Yep, for I got Brushy. some rapid fire questions. Yeah, so these here. are going to oh, be no. rapid for, fire. Uh, Tuna. All, all I'm just going to say yeah. is I will take all of your positive energy in the hopes we win because, like, this is the second season in a row where my team is like right on the cusp at the very end. So mm -hmm. hey, you you kind of you mostly can control your own fate. So uh, you know it's up to you guys. That's all you can ask for. But moving on to questions for Tuna here. This is a series of questions from Saku. Tuna, do you All like right. tuna melts? I love tuna melts. Tell us how close of a relationship you have with Lefty and Oz. And I love in them. Your neighborhood. They're great. How much can you lift, bro? Uh, it depends on the lift. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Elaborate. I need more. Uh, I need more uh, information. Bench press, bench press 315, deadlift uh, four, uh, 555 right now, and squats about 485. Hell yeah. Favorite food to eat? Uh, 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 Come on, man. Bacon. I don't know. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say tuna. <laughs> no, I don't eat myself, but bacon. I still love tuna melts. Cannibal. Um, from no, Ted, we have, no. what is the best gas station chain in Cheats. Pennsylvania? Easy. <laughs> uh, from Blue Spartan, where does your tag brushy tuna come from? Uh, when I was a kid, when you first signed into Xbox, they give you a random name, right? So the original random name was Brushy Pid 660530. Um, so when I got older, I was like, I want to change that. What can I change it to? I want to keep one part of this. I was like, all right, let's keep the brushy. What works with brushy? Like, let's get something kind of weird that goes with it. So tuna. Brushy nice. tuna. All right. The mystery is revealed. From yep. Ghost, uh, is brushy to, what is brushy tuna doing to ensure that HSA enters playoffs? Uh, they're playing DMB this week, right? Uh, yeah. As much as possible to make sure they don't make it. So I don't want them to beat DMB. Nice. <laughs> From Buse, how do you pronounce Buse? Buse. <laughs> it's easy. That, you think about it like abuse. Take the uh out. Yeah. Buse. That Done. felt like an easy one. Maybe yeah. it, it it's easier when it's uh, was that when S it's was that S by Buse? I feel like it's it S was. by Buse himself. It was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, from from Diamond, which is your favorite series to play it? Uh pro. Just because of the open deck list, it makes you have to be more outskilled than your opponent to try to pick up the wins. What captain or player have you wanted to play with that you haven't gotten a chance to yet? Um, ooh, probably, probably someone from like the stubs, like maybe Osmonot. Nice. Any general life advice? Uh, within like five yeah. seconds. <laughs> yeah, don't don't dwell on negativity. Always think about positives. If something's negative in your life, ignore it and keep moving. Excellent. From Donde, salt water or fresh water? Salt water. Starkist Bumblebee or Chicken of the Sea? Starkist. <laughs> From our hat, relish on a tuna sandwich, yay or yeah. nay? Oh, that's relish is disgusting. Our hat, I just <laughs> get that away from me. <laughs> get, get out of here with that question, our hat. And last one, also from our hat, best cheese for a tuna melt? Cheddar. Easy. Nicely done. I, I like your uh, your rapid fire answers. Thank you. Thank you. And. No. Uh, <clears throat> Before we uh, before we leave, before we get out of here, I got something for you guys. Got a question for all you guys. Uh oh, nothing. I'm no, scared. So, oh no, boy, you shouldn't be scared. I'm scared. Uh, take a look at my <laughs> I'm screen slightly here. Slightly scared. Uh, starting with Ron, what four teams on each conference do you think are going to make the playoffs? Oh, oh, nice. Uh, okay, so from gold, I was going to say we didn't even talk about that yet. We've got obviously Mergle. Mergle is in already. Um, I think Zilfs makes it. I think Stubbs makes it, and I think Teenage Mutant Demon Hunter make it. I think it's just the top four. Blood Bloomers doesn't do enough. The rest of them have too much of a point gap to overcome. Those are the four. Stays as the top four right now. 
in the red conference, obviously, good luck. Albatross is already in. I think Dirty Mike and the boys is still going to make it, even though they're going to lose. Hearthstone Academy Ooh. is going to win, and they're going to make it in. And Pod People is going to do their thing and grab that four seed. Brushy, what do you think? I kind of agree with Ron already. Murgirl McGurgle stays in. Hot Zilfs are in. Uh, Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters are in and the Stubs are in for gold uh, and then for red obviously I can't even see red right now because I'm loading it up D DMB makes it I don't care what they're in somewhere uh, <laughs> GLA's obviously already made it uh, I think Harson Academy makes it as well and uh, I agree I actually agreed with Ron that pod people are going to somehow like do the normal pod people thing and just steal a uh, playoff slot JR what do you think I'm sad my team's not getting the love I hoped I'd, it would get. Um, <laughs> gold, I'm going to agree with the consensus. I think it's going to be uh, Murgle Murgle, Zilfs, um, Teenage Mutant Demon Hunters, and a Stubbs. Not necessarily in that exact order, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then for red, it's going to obviously be GLA. I'm going to say Hearthstone Academy because I did pick them to win, so I might as well remain consistent. Um, I'm going to say my own team makes it because why wouldn't I at this point? And I think the fourth team I'm going to say, hmm. let me think, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to say pot people make it to the, make it as the fourth team. Yeah. I'm going to say like, I'm going to say like we either pass enough of the other teams to make it or, uh, we make it just above them uh we make it above those teams and stay above pop people so i think one way or another we're going to figure this out i'm determined man nobody <laughs> nobody's putting me down all right uh here's my here's my pick real quickly um i obviously the, i think gla i mean we'll start with gold actually i think you guys are correct i think the, the top four teams that are there now are going to make it i think the i don't think hot zilfs lay down for the blood boomers and give them enough points to get in there um for the red conference obviously gla makes it i do agree i think Dirty Mike and the Boys has just enough points above the fifth place team uh, that, uh, that even if they lose, I still think they get enough points and they're in. Um, I, I, I agree. I think Hearthstone Academy is going to it's going to punch their ticket in there as well. And then that leaves the the fourth spot. Um, man, this is difficult, but I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to go pod people, too. Yeah, I'm gonna people say, hype train. I'm going to say pod people. Not coming. I'm going to say <laughs> I'm going to say that I hope we curse them. <laughs> I'm going to say that uh, that um, Illidilly, Illidilly's, Illidilly's Death Knights and Redacted all uh, missed the playoffs by less than three points. Oh, that's a bold prediction there. Yeah. yeah. I, I probably I'm would sad. have picked a little bit different if you had Redacted not already gone down eight to two against Pod People. That was a that was a big swing. Well, factor. no, it's eight to four. Eight to four. Yeah. Eight to four, my bad. Which Come is on, Ron, uh, learn how to read. <laughs> but also one last thing i'm sorry i missed this in the chat here Tweeg. i was reading off a document and totally missed it one final question for tuna how does one brush a tuna it has no hair you brush its uh scales easy oh yeah yes. there you go question <laughs> <is> answered a <laughs> that's a it sign is, it's very, it very much a thing <laughs> i know a lot about All tunas <laughs> Any last thoughts, guys, before we before we get out of here? Uh, I'm scared to watch my team miss playoffs two seasons in a row. No, that's uh, never JR, happened before, and I don't want it to happen now. JR, <laughs> you're the captain. Remember, project confidence. I'm excited that my team is the opportunity to make, make playoffs. playoffs. Come on, Oh, yes. I am Come excited on, about that. I'm just also scared. <laughs> well, you this shouldn't be saying those things together. out loud. <laughs> My goodness. Hey, it's not my fault. I am a I, great big ball of emotion. My friends and family can attest to that. Mm -hmm. I uh, <laughs> I want to thank Ron for stepping in again this week. I know um, this week was kind of a last minute thing where, you, you know, I thought you were going to be on, but but uh, you didn't think you were going to be on, but you just stepped right in there. And, and I really appreciate it. And we're going to see you again one more time, uh, probably the last show of the season. Um, we're going to be interviewing the, the, uh, the finals teams, whoever wins. Um, and uh, Brushy, thank you for for coming on and, and guesting. And you will you will also be uh, in that same show that that Ron Ooh. will be. So uh, oh no, I gotta so I gotta be in here with Ron again. Yeah, so another, that's right. Another man. 
Rod Rushy. Gonna <laughs> haunt your dreams. You may see it as punishment. <laughs> yeah. We see it as a reward. And for the next <laughs> two playoff weeks, uh, we're going to have Myanodon as lead host. It'll be myself, Myanodon, and JR. And we'll be talking uh, playoffs uh, for the next two weeks. Um, any last thoughts, Brushy? Uh, no. Thanks for having me on, Leo. Had a fun time. Glad to be here. JR? I think yeah, you're already nice. This was a very yeah. nice talk. Uh, always fun when looking at the playoff picture. So I'm glad this lived up to the hype for me, at least. Ron? Yeah, I'm just really excited to get to talk about the last week of the legacy regular season and all the exciting playoff scenarios that can happen. Um, always happy to be on here with you guys. Uh, brushy tuna aside, you know, it was a great time. And, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing how things play out through the rest of the season, who the champion is going to be. And for all those of you out there who are looking for an upgrade, you know, Mayan's stepping in next. So make sure you tune in next week. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. And uh, I got something special for you guys on our way out to some one of my classic WoW favorites. So enjoy. Your flippers to the sky! Oh, 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 oh.